such a fun car to drive this little thing. This has to be one of the coolest cars to ever come out of Italy. This is of course the Fiat 500 Abarth and in this video we're gonna talk about this design. Have a look at the front end. This funky bumbly round front end. Have a look at the side and the rear of course. Jump into the interior and then we're gonna take it for a drive. Big thanks to my friends at European Auto House once again for letting me review this Fiat 500 Abarth. If you're interested in this or any old school European cars, go and check out their full inventory linked down in the description. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a happier front end of a car? I absolutely love that about the Fiat 500. Not just the Abarth, but it's not. It's a car that doesn't take itself too seriously. This is a small little 160 horsepower car that tries to look very angry in the front end, but it doesn't really succeed in doing that. And I think that's so cute about this car. It's also a very round car all over. We're looking at it from a side view, which we're gonna show you in just a second. It is a very bubbly car and that happens here in the front as well. Just have a look at how many circles you can find here. You have the headlights, you have the uh, in integration or the in internal parts of the headlights being a lot of circles. You have the indicators here being circles as well, as well as the, down, the fog lights down at the bottom. I think it's such a cool design, an iconic design and a really good modernization of the original Fiat 500. A couple of details that I love about this car. As I said, this is a spec that I would choose the red with the white graphics, specifically the rally wheels. I just love the design of those. You know I like multi-spoke wheels, specifically when they're rally inspired like we have here. But there is not a single Fiat logo on this car. All you have are these Abarth logos all over the car. What I like about this front end is that we have this nice intake here to add some cooling. It's not a big one, but it definitely helps with the cooling. You can see the radiator back here. I also love this lower part of the Abarth. It just makes it look a lot meaner than the normal 500 and also this little lip down here which creates this underbite. So this spoiler down here, this lip is the furthest a forward part of the car and it creates this underbite that I want to see on hot hatches like this. It just has the right vibe all around, specifically in this red color. Now this being one of the smallest cars on sale here in the US, if not the smallest. But have a look at the proportions of this thing. How in the world do they fit an engine under this short distance right here? It is an inline four, so it's not a small engine. And look at the steep incline from the hood, almost going in one single line into the uh, windshield. And this A-pillar position, which we're gonna have a look at more in, in a side view, it almost sits right above the front axle, which is pretty unique for hot hatches like this. Another detail I love about the front end here is this little nose that we have. I think this is such a good modernization of the original Fiat 500, and it adds to some sort of sharp lines in the front end in this sea of uh, soft corners and bubbliness and roundness. I think this is a key de defining line of the front end. It also creates a nice housing for the badge in the middle. If you want to talk about bubbly cars, have a look at the uh, silhouette of this car, just how bubbly it is. And compare the height to the overall length of this car. And the door feels like it's almost half the entire <laughs> length of the car. I love this car and I love the proportions of it as well. And I think we need more fun, cheap cars like this that doesn't necessarily need to have all the tech that we have in modern cars. Look at this beautiful shoulder line here. I'm gonna show you in the back how beautifully it wraps around all the way to the back and then it continues all the way in to the headlight right here. And these wheels, some of my favorite wheels that's ever been put on a car. I absolutely love the design of this. It reminds me of uh, rally stage cars uh, when they are are on a uh, tarmac surface. They have very similar type wheels like we have here. And these have actually held up really nicely over time and looks like they're in really good conditions as well. A couple of other features that sets this apart from the normal boring Fiat 500 are you have these Abarth graphics. And as I said, there's not a single Fiat badge on this car. You also have the white side mirrors. And all together, I think this graphics right here in combination with the side mirrors and specifically these 17 inch wheels, 
it makes for a very good looking car not just in the proportions which i absolutely adore in this car but also in the graphic design another cool feature that adds to the sportiness of this car is how the light kind of shades down here and then comes back really strong in the side skirt and we have this line going from the cut line of the door going into the lower side skirt which i think it's absolutely beautiful because it shows that they consider the cut line the cut line now becomes a part of the overall design because it continues into one of the physical pieces on the car that's added to the Abarth and details like that makes me appreciate the design even more one thing that I wish I could change on the Abarth I think this is a 2013 uh, model they might have made a trim that has this but this chrome door handle not a huge fan and also the chrome that sits in the taillights and the headlights I kind of want to have them be blacked out I'm pretty sure there's a version for that but then you also need to notice this cool Abarth logo that sits just pretty randomly on the rear fender but still a detail that I really appreciate so coming around to the back view of the Fiat 500 Abarth and you know having a proportions like this I can't imagine it's easy for the designers to make it look planted because it sits so tall but I think they did a really good job on the Abarth and we have this almost waterfall feel this whole rear end just slopes into the bumper with the graphic features kind of sprinkled out all over don't necessarily like the chrome here in the rear as I said on the door handles as well we do have a big Abarth a logo at the rear and I like the design of these taillights because it doesn't really look as bubbly as the front end and that's thanks to one single corner we do have a sharp corner in this area although the, everything else is rounded but this sharp corner I think adds to some more definition in this design and also how this line then cuts into the bumper it's just a beautiful touch I wanted to show you this uh, shoulder line and how it kind of wraps around it goes into the back it's details again like this that feels like it has a wrap around design that actually consider the design from both the front side and rear and have it be congruent all around and on this specific Abarth model we also have some air outlets right here which I believe is functional because I can stick my hand in here I'm not sure how far in these go but they feel like they sit pretty deep a couple of things back here that feels again like this is a small little 160 horsepower car that tries to be a grown-up soup or sports car and that is one this diffuser with this big exhaust pipe so we have a nice outline but the actual exhaust is a lot smaller as you can see this circle in here but overall this diffuser and how it cuts into the bumper I really love the look of this it helps to add to this plantedness of this car and if you look at the sidelines of this car and how it kind of goes in a uh, pyramid shape it also adds to the wide fenders in the rear and having it look planted on the road I also like this beautiful little chamfer that we have going around the rear end diffuser making it feel like it's actually supposed to be here with a nice framing of a chamfer going around it up top we have this spoiler and this the designers of the 500 really did not want to have the, the spoiler up here the reason being because they wanted to have a very clean smooth rounded design all around but then they did some wind tunnel testing and if you remove this you have a drag coefficient of 0.4 but when you add this spoiler up top it actually drops to 0.32 so it's definitely worth it to have it up there personally I think it makes for a much sportier look specifically when you look at it in a side view it just sends off the rear end in a cooler way and I'm really glad that they decided to stick with it welcome to the inside of the beautiful little uh, cute Fiat 500 the first thing you notice here is how the metallic paint of the outside actually goes into the dash this Italian flair for style I absolutely love this treatment of the dash we have the 500 logo here but still no Fiat logo anywhere to be seen you have the Abarth logo in the center of the steering wheel and what I love about the shifter is that it feels like it's it, it's positioned like in almost like in a minivan style on the dash itself but what that does if, if when you're out driving it is very easy very short distance between the steering wheel and the shifter when you go, want to go and shift quickly super easy to do that we also have a sport button up here which I think is kind of unnecessary because if you're buying a Fiat 500 Abarth you always want it to be in a sport mode you have a couple of cup holders down here in the middle no sunroof thankfully we have a nice turbo gauge that feels 
almost like an aftermarket aftermarket piece in this gauge cluster but i love that it's there with a you even have a shift light for that thing and you also have one single armrest that's all you get for armrest and i think it's it's good because this is all driver oriented nobody cares about the passengers in a fiat 500 abarth so the driver are the only person who gets the armrest that rounded feeling that we talked about on the outside specifically in the front end it definitely comes back in the interior we have rounded control controls for everything you need in here rounded outlines and chamfers around these buttons and we have a massive round gauge cluster with the tachometer being kind of inside and then you have the outer circle being the speedometer which is a very unique and cool integration of how you can solve that problem having both those in that tiny space but we don't have any screens in here there's zero screens nothing to be distracted by you do have the tiny little led screen right here for the radio but that's it and I love that about this car and you have a properly sized glove box for this type of vehicle so let's fire it up real quick and let's see what this Fiat 500 is all about one thing I love about this is the noise coming out of those exhausts in the back just listen to that another interesting detail is you don't have any controls on the doors the doors are just one big pl plastic piece pushed into the door if you want to roll down the windows for example you do that right here with these buttons so here we go rolling down the right the driver's side with this button and of course the passenger side on the opposite side very intuitive i mean everything that you need is right here and that's about it nothing more <laughs> All right, guys, we're driving the Fiat 500 Abarth, one of my favorite small little cars, because as I said in the review, this is the essence of what a fun car should be. You have the manual gearbox. This only has 59,500 miles on it, and it's held up surprisingly well. You see some wear on, the, on these buttons, but that's about it. It's held up really well for, you know, a Fiat product. And this is also the right spec, the red with the white wheels. And just listen to that little engine, the inline four, 160 horsepower. Might not sound like a lot, but you know, you, you, you know what the deal is here. It's all about weight. And this car doesn't weigh anything and that makes it feel quick. In addition to the proportions, if you go 30 in this, it kind of feels like you're doing 150. Here we go. I love that little shift light as well, the boost gauge, <laughs> so cool. It's just a fun car. As I said it before too, it doesn't really take itself too seriously, but it, it, can, it feels like it wants to be one of the big, uh, big boys with all the graphic features and the boost gauge. Does it succeed in, you know, trying to act like a proper sports car? Kinda, and a lot of that has to do with the noise. It goes, it really does go. And it's not, it, the turbo, is, it's not laggy. You have a pretty constant power um, across the entire rev range, which I like. And the ride quality in here, the seats are comfortable. That's good. For the noise inside here, there is a lot of rattling going on. Do I care about that? Not really, because it is a cheap car you don't expect it to have the same build quality as a BMW or Mercedes, and that's totally fine. Again, I think we need more cars like this that, you know, it focuses on what matters for a driving enthusiast, and that is a driving experience. It doesn't matter if the door creaks a little bit, if you have hard plastic all over the interior. For me, at least, I don't really care about stuff like that. As long as it looks like this does, and it is this fun to drive, I'm all good. You now, one area where I think this is gonna excel in is the turning radius. So let's have a look at that. Making a U-turn here. And I think the rear left wheel didn't even move from its spot. It kind of turned around <laughs> the rear wheel. So 
such a fun car to drive this little thing. I would love to take it up in the mountains and just rip it for an entire day and just have some fun. To sum this Fiat 500 Abarth up, I love that it exists and again I wish there were more cars like this that focus on the essential of what it means to be a fun car.